Hey, Phone Sites users. So I'm going to walk you through how you can connect your Phone Sites landing page to LionDesk. Uh, it's a popular CRM that's used by a lot of real estate agents. Um, now, this connection that I'm going to be setting up, I'm going to be using a tool called a, a Zapier webhook. Uh, it's certainly um, a setup that mimics a lot of similar setups that you would do for other CRM platforms. Uh, I've created a, a, another video as well for the group in the past where I was helping out uh, a real estate agent to connect with another um, CRM called Real Geeks. Um, same setup, essentially. You're just using what's called a Zapier webhook to connect between phone sites and the CRM platform. And if you're not really familiar with what Zapier is, uh, Zapier is a really great tool for connecting two or more uh, softwares together. I kind of think of it as like a, a bridge, right? It's taking data from one side of the river to the next side of the river and zapier is just acting as the bridge between the two banks of the river so let's get started first with lion desk uh, i have lion desk phone sites and zapier already open uh, what i need to do is i'm going to need to connect uh, lion desk first with zapier and in order to do that back here in lion desk i'm going to uh, navigate to settings. And I think there's a, a second way for this. It certainly shows up over here on the left, but I, I believe if I click over here, I should be able to get to the same page there from settings. So let's just go here though, because it's more abundantly clear in terms of looking here that uh, you can navigate the settings there. It's easier to miss it over here. Okay, so under settings, I'm gonna go under what's called third party integrations. And if you're working with a, a, a different CRM platform, you're probably going to be navigating um, just like I have to where there's somewhere in the CRM uh, an option for settings and there's probably an option for third party integrations. This is a pretty common way for this to be laid out. So I'm going to go ahead and select third party integrations and then I'm going to select Zapier and I'm going to select enable. Now this option here, it might be a little differently laid out um, on other platforms, but it's the same basic functionality. Basically you need to to grab what's called an API key. This is gonna be a unique uh, string of alpha, alpha and numeric characters that uh, once we have this put in place over in Zapier, it's gonna be able to connect Zapier and LineDesk together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna copy this. So in this case, I actually have to highlight this and then copy it. Uh, on other platforms, it might just be like where you, you kind of click into it and then it'll copy it for you automatically. But in this case, I had to manually copy this. So let's hop on over to Zapier now. And here in Zapier, what I'm going to do is I need to now find LionDesk so I can add in that API key to connect my, my Zapier account with LionDesk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to what's called My Apps. And this page here is just going to display all of the different uh, accounts that I have set up on different software platforms, right? So I'm going to search here where it says connect a new account. I'm going to search for LionDesk. And this step that I'm going through here to add in this API key, um, this probably will only need to be done once for you uh, unless you, you deactivate Lion Desk or you know some other account and then have to reactivate it later or for whatever reason if you have multiple Lion Desk accounts right um, like maybe you're setting this up for for different clients or something but anyways I'm going to paste in that API key that I had copied from right over here so you can see it's the DE five C A E blah 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 and DE five C A E and then blah 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 right okay so then I'm going to go ahead and select yes continue. And you can see here, it's now connected Lion Desk CRM in here, right? Okay, perfect. So now when I'm ready to set up my first Zap using Lion Desk, uh, I've already got that connected. Back here in Lion Desk, I don't even need to see the screen anymore. There's nothing for me to do. There's not like a, a save button. That's possible, maybe some other CRM platform after you've enabled this, perhaps you need to save it, but uh, probably not likely. So I'm gonna go ahead and just navigate back here to, to dashboard or actually to contacts, uh, just to show you that right now, before this integration is set up, we have no contacts. Um, I'm going to go back over to Zapier and now we're gonna create a, uh, a Zapier webhook. And that's gonna act as my bridge between 
um, line desk and uh, phone sites, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and select make a zap, which you see up here. And I'm going to first select, uh, I'm just gonna search in here webhook. Um, if you've most recently used webhooks, it may be listed up here, but I don't see it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for webhook, webhooks by Zapier, go ahead and select that. And so that's, that should be the first um, option that you, you have listed here, because that's what you search for. This is gonna be uh, the, the app that we're gonna be using to initiate the, uh, the, the data here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, choose trigger event. This is going to be catch hook. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select continue. So then Zapier is gonna give me this unique URL. This is my uh, hook, my web hook, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. So just select copy. And then I'm gonna go back over to phone sites and drop this into the settings tab. So I have this demo funnel set up here. Uh, it's not really a demo funnel. It's a, I'm just I'm demoing it here on the, the video, but I'm not demoing it to a, like a client or anything like that. But on under settings for the, the first page where you're capturing the lead information, uh, you're going to go to settings and then scroll down the page to advanced post webhooks and then just paste in that URL, your webhook here. And then you can just save. And you're finished here in phone sites. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and select view here. I, I hit command and then clicked. That way it would open up in a new tab. Uh, if you're on a, a Mac, it's command click. Uh, if it's uh, <clears throat> a PC or Linux or maybe a Chromebook, uh, it's going to be control and click. Okay, so here's my, my landing page here. Back here in uh, Zapier, Zapier is going to ask me to test the data. So that's why I had opened this page here. That way we can test the data. So I'm going to go ahead and select continue and it's going to ask test and review. So let's go ahead and do that. So test and review. Now it's waiting for me to submit data. So let's go ahead and do this. And I got to do it kind of quickly. I think they give you like one or two minutes, but otherwise it's going to time out. So let's go ahead and put this data in here. Let's select, let's go. So my data is submitted through. Um, now you can see back here over on Zapier, it's already pulled in that data really quickly, pulled it in, right? I'm gonna go ahead and select in here and you can see um, there's what's called some metadata that uh, Phone Sites has associated with um, the lead submission. But if we scroll down, you can see here's the email, here's the name, and here's the phone number. So that's my sample. Um, I've got it selected. I'm gonna go ahead and if for whatever reason, if you need to keep testing this, you could keep submitting data through it. You could select get more samples and then submit data through your, your funnel and be able to keep getting more samples. But I'm done editing this step. Um, now I'm going to select the, the action step. This is the trigger step. This is what triggers the, the rest of my zap to, to uh, uh, occur, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and select do this. And now I'm gonna search for Lion Desk. So if I had used Lion Desk recently, it would show up in here. But since I just added Lion Desk, it's not gonna show up there as a most recent uh, option. Okay, so choose app. Lion desk, choose action event. Now I want to select create person or create contact. So let's go ahead and do that. Create new contact. And different apps will have different action events. You might have one, you might have you know, five or six different action events. But in this case, uh, for Lion desk, it looks like they just have uh, to create new act, uh, create, create new contact and add email activity. So I'm just going to use create new contact, select continue. And now we got to find my line desk account. So if I had not already gone through that previous step of adding in the API key, like we had done previous to setting up the zap, then I would have to go ahead and um, set that up here in this step. Uh, but I don't have to, because I already have line desk already added in. So let's go ahead and select line desk, select continue. And now this part um, of setting up the zap is uh, a mapping uh, action. So basically what you're doing is you're mapping data that comes from phone sites to different data fields that will be in line desk. So using the sample data, uh, I can select this option here. Uh, we're going to be using the sample data that we had just brought in from this step from phone sites. And uh, I only, only had like what, three fields in here. If I added in more fields, uh, I could be collecting more information to add into line desk, but I want to keep it really simple for the leads so that they'll 
they'll actually give me their contact information. I'm gonna go ahead and select. Um, in this case, I didn't uh, break down their name between two different fields. I didn't have it broken down between first and last. So um, you can do that. Uh, I have another video that uh, breaks down that process of how to, to break down the, the name of the two fields. But in this case, let's just fudge it and use um, the, the name field here for first name. So I'm gonna go ahead and select name. And then um, uh, email, let's map the email field. And for phone, I'm going to select this option right there. I don't have any other fields, so that's good enough for me. Um, let's see here. Now, contact source is optional. Um, I could put in here, so like if I had, this was coming from, uh, I could say like this is maybe like a Facebook lead. It, because you'll probably be using um, your phone sites funnel with Facebook, right? So I could select that. If I wanted to, I could use something else. Like I could select, use a custom value, and then just type in here, like, um, I don't know, uh, let's say LinkedIn or something like that. And if I wanted to, I could even put in here the name of my funnel. So in this case, the name of my funnel was Home Team Lending. So let's just copy that. That way, if I have like five or six different funnels, I'll know exactly which funnel that lead came in from. And this will just add that in uh, into a contact source ID field in Line Desk. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select continue. And I'm gonna go ahead and test and review. So this is gonna submit that data over to uh, Line Desk and we can go check this out. Let's go do that. So I don't see like a refresh button. So I'm just gonna refresh the uh, the browser here. We should see my data. There we go, perfect. So I came through. So there I am. Um, we'll submit another one after we're done with this. Let's go, because that's always a good idea even after you've tested here. It's always a good idea to just start from scratch and, and test it uh, yet again after you've turned this zap on. So go ahead and turn on the zap. By default, whenever you've created a, a zap, it's not turned on, you'll need to turn that on. And then I also suggest giving this a name too, that way it makes sense to you. So you could call this, let's see. And just give something that makes sense to you that way three months goes by, you'll know exactly what this zap is when you have multiple zaps set up in Zapier. Okay, all right, cool. So that's all set. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back out here and you can see under home, um, I have this zap set up. Let's just get rid of this. I don't need that anymore. That was just something I was uh, toying around with earlier. Um, anyways, so in Zapier, it's pretty cool. You can set up uh, folders where you can store different zaps. That's what I do, just to keep things nice and clean. That way I don't accidentally delete uh, Juby's zaps and he doesn't delete mine or anything like that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. I mentioned that after we save this, we're going to do another test run here of our funnel. All right. And let's go back to line desk. And now Druby is in my CRM. Should be anyways. There we go. So Juby's in my CRM as we see. See how fast that was? Now, for whatever reason, when you're testing this out and you can't see that record come through, you go back over to Zapier. You can actually take a look at whether or not your, your Zap has failed. So you can go under task history and you can check out uh, successes or failures. And if you click into this, it's gonna give you a hint into um, you know, what failed and then you can kind of troubleshoot from there. And if you're stuck, uh, you can at least use this information to uh, provide that to someone else that can help you out with your zap. That way they can try to troubleshoot what's going on. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Again, this uh, setup here for Line Desk, it should work pretty similarly for other CRM platforms as well. Um, auto dealer CRMs, uh, on the other hand, though, 
those are a little bit more tricky just because generally those do not have an integration set up automatically with Zapier, unfortunately. Thanks guys, let us know if you have any questions.